Hey friends, welcome to Meals with Maria. Today we're gonna to put a new twist on an old favorite, instant mashed potatoes. Now who doesn't have a box of these in their pantry? And they're hanging around. The great thing about them is they last a really long time. So I often buy fresh potatoes and if I don't get to them, they get the eyes on them and I lose part of them. Good news is these are around and they are your friend. I think it costs about $1.60 for this entire box and you can get quite a few sides out of it. Now, you make them according to the package. That's pretty good, that's a great side, but it gets boring time after time. I wanted to bring you some recipes that are basically pretty pantry friendly. I didn't have to go out and buy anything special in order to make these. I had this stuff in my regular pantries and there's a lot of swaps for it. So it's a lot of fun to make your instant mashed potatoes even better, even more exciting than they ever were and at a budget price. I also have an awesome leftover recipe for you. So if you ever make up too many instant mashed potatoes, do not fret. You can actually make an entire meal out of your leftover mashed potatoes. I'll admit Ben has even tried the instant mashed potatoes and he thinks it's a win. So here's some great recipes. We're gonna start off with a cheddar bacon ranch mashed potato because yum. I always start my mashed potatoes with a broth. So if I have a broth on hand, I'll use that. Or if you don't, just go ahead and use chicken bouillon or even beef bouillon. Just add that to your water and it will really spice things up for you. Then I'm just adding a couple tablespoons of butter. That's per the package. So I'm making these 100% per the package except switching out that chicken bouillon. Also adding milk because I don't have like the complete mashed potatoes. So in my case, it says added butter and milk. If you have just like a package of the potatoes you can just add water to, go ahead and do it that way. Add the bouillon. I mean, butter always makes everything better, but you can save some money by not even adding in the butter or adding it in milk. Just a little bit of water and I recommend bouillon if you have it. Will do and makes delicious potatoes. Somehow I didn't get this on camera, but you wanna add three teaspoons of ranch seasoning mix. So like the dressing package, Hidden Valley, whatever brand you have of ranch, that's what you wanna add in here to give it that ranch flavor. You could add more or less depending on how much you like this or go without it if you're not a big fan or you don't have any on hand. But if you have it on hand, I recommend you add it because it gives it a nice flavor. Then I'm just adding about a quarter cup to a half a cup of cheddar cheese. Again, this is up to you how much you wanna put on here. I actually had this leftover from an extreme grocery budget challenge, so I just decided to add it. And then a few strips of crumbled bacon. If you don't have fresh bacon, you can always use bacon bits. And then I just cut up some scallions because I have finally been keeping them on my counter so I have them growing and ready to use whenever I want. And look how pretty that is. That is a delicious meal. We served that with some baked chicken and it was absolutely fantastic. The next recipe is gonna be another way to spruce up your boxed mashed potatoes. And we're just starting with two cups of milk and then two cups of broth. Again, you can use bouillon and you can use a milk alternative here if you would like as well. Then I have half a stick of butter and I'm actually going to heat up my broth and milk until almost boiling. And then I'm gonna pour that right over that stick of butter in the container that I'm actually gonna make the potatoes in. Now the recipe calls for eight ounces of instant mashed potatoes, which I was kind of struggling to figure out how many instant mashed potatoes that was. But luckily if you are a seasoned instant mashed potato maker, you can pretty much figure out what the consistency should be. So I just started adding in as much as needed to get to the potatoes that I wanted. Now I also put one half a cup of sour cream and half a cup of cream cheese in here. So we're getting cheesy, we're getting milky, all the things. I happen to have these things on hand most times, so this was a nice addition for me. I think even if you just did the milk and the bouillon, you would probably be in pretty good shape anyway. Like this is adding a lot of flavor as it is. You could probably use margarine instead of butter, maybe even just an oil. So you just wanna mix that in until everything is well combined. So I'm actually melting my butter and I'm melting my cream cheese and my sour cream. So making sure everything gets really well incorporated by using that hot milk and broth. I'm also adding a half a tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of onion powder and one teaspoon of garlic powder. This is all to taste guys, whatever you have. I bet some fresh garlic might taste delicious in here too, depending on whether you like kind of that raw garlic flavor or not. These turned out phenomenal. They were so delicious. They're such a nice addition to any meal. And even though I added a lot of things, I feel like you could take something in or out of this and it would be no problem. I feel like it went together really fast, which is really nice. On this particular night, we had some steak tips. We had some vegetables and some salad. So I just wanna show you a little bit of balance. 
You can still eat healthy and have some delicious mashed potatoes and everything is good. That prior recipe made a lot of mashed potatoes. So we ended up with quite a bit of leftovers, which I'm sure you've been in this predicament at some point in time as well. So with these mashed over, mashed over, leftover mashed potatoes, I'm gonna make some potato pancakes for dinner. You just wanna take three cups or so, or you know, I had what I had, of leftover mashed potatoes, three eggs in this, because these are actually gonna end up being a pretty hearty meal. So we end up with a couple of protein sources in here, which is pretty nice, and that way I didn't feel like I needed to really add a protein on the side once I was eating them for dinner. So you just wanna mix those potatoes with those eggs really well. Then I'm going to add in a teaspoon or so of garlic powder. A half a cup of whole wheat flour. Now, I think you could use regular flour. I think that's just the recipe that I had to said to add whole wheat. And I added a third a cup at first, and you'll see I go back later and add a little bit more because I did want my potato pancakes to be a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier. And then about a cup and a half of shredded cheese. I happen to have cheddar, but you could use mozzarella. I think even like a pepper jack would taste good, a Colby, whatever you have on hand, make it easy on yourself. These are great leftover things, so you really don't wanna go out and necessarily buy anything just to make it. And then a third a cup of either crumbled bacon or ham. I happen to have some ham on hand. And then a third a cup of green onions or you know however much you have, I just sliced some up. And then I think in that case, if you had a red onion, if you slice that really small, that might taste delicious in this too. So I think just make it your own. If you wanna add onion powder, you could do that too. Now, once everything is well mixed, I'm gonna cook these in a similar style to pancakes. So I'm just using some olive oil over a medium low heat, heating that up really well. And then I'm gonna dollop my potato pancakes in there. The recipe said to shape them, but mine did not come out like that dry. And I really didn't wanna add that much more of a flour to them because I really wanted them to be potatoey. So I'm just doing my best with what I have. They tasted delicious. Like I don't know that I would have added more of anything in the future. I just think I just need to get used to cooking them in this method. You definitely wanna cook these over that medium low heat because you are gonna cook them for about five minutes on each side. You wanna make sure that they really are cooked completely through because there is egg in them. Same idea as you would with a regular pancake because there's usually, depending on the pancake mix or whatever you're doing for pancakes, sometimes there's egg in them. Either way, you still wanna make sure your pancakes are fully cooked through, right? We wanna do the same thing with our potato pancakes. Pancakes. This recipe makes about 12 small potato pancakes and it was plenty enough for my family for dinner. And it was so good, like I was surprised. I thought they would be more of like a side, but then once I put the eggs and the ham and the bacon in them, like, or I didn't put bacon in them, but <laughs> once I put my protein in them, I thought, well, gee, I'm not gonna put an egg on top of this as well. So you can just eat that like with a little salad on the side and it's absolutely perfect. They're so like crispy on the outside, warm on the inside, lots of flavor. I highly recommend it and I would make them again a 10 out of 10. And that is the last recipe for this video. So I hope you got some great ideas to use your instant mashed potatoes with because I know we all have a box of those in the cabinet just waiting to be used and you're like, oh, just a regular instant mashed potato, not that fun. These potatoes are a lot more fun. So I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure to give this video a like so we can make more fun stuff with our pantry items. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I know you keep seeing my videos and you haven't pressed that button. It really helps me out to subscribe. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll get notifications so you don't miss any of my future videos because I am posting three times a week these days. So I want to thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all very soon.